visited last, we had installed the dash harness in our 60 Bel Air, and we had all our harnesses, or all our extensions all routed out, had all of our cluster connections all pulled up to the dash. Today we're working on our cluster harness here. Uh, this car is a little unique in the respect that the customer has his four cool new custom gauges that he wanted in the car. And uh, originally he was going to mount them under the dash. And we figured a way to mount them in the original pods so they don't look out of place. Uh, what that does for us is we've got a combination of aftermarket gauges and stock stuff. So we're going to have to use both here. And with our cluster kit here, okay, you get this really cool set of instructions. It shows you how to hook everything up. It has all the connections for the various applications. You also get all these light sockets, terminals, connectors, everything to do all your stock configurations. We also give you this package of terminals here with a general generic instruction sheet on how to hook up most aftermarket gauges. Comes with a uh, combination of male and female connectors, some ring terminals, butt splices. Um, basically, when we're doing this, you're going to have a situation where each of these gauges is going to be lighted and our speedometer cluster is going to be lighted. So we're going to need more than one feed. Now if you recall, we had uh, four individual cluster connections in the car that we talked about. Um, this car is unique. Normally we have one, one or two cluster disconnects in the car, we just snap them together. This particular car, because of the way it goes together here, we've got a left-hand cluster, a right-hand cluster, and your center cluster. That necessitated us designing a system where you could build just the left-hand cluster, just the right hand, and just the center. And that way you can put it all in the car and just reach up underneath and snap your disconnects together. Now, I've already pre-prepped the uh, left-hand cluster here. The gauges that we're using here are mechanical gauges. In other words, it's got a capillary tube for both the temperature and the oil pressure gauges here. Um, as opposed to an electric gauge. In the cluster kit that comes with your harness, it gives you all the wires and they're actually already plugged into this connector. I've taken the liberty of pulling them out because we're not going to need the 12 volt feed, we're not going to need the brake warning light, we're not going to need the temperature and the oil pressure because we're running strictly mechanical gauges and they're all aftermarket. All we need for this particular application here is the lighting. So I've taken the harness, pulled the unnecessary wires out, and I've hooked these up. So we're going to put these into the connector here, or into the housing, I should say. And these will be all done. Alright, this particular left-hand cluster right now is ready to snap into the car. We'll route this down through the hole in the dash, we'll route the low pressure line down through the hole, we'll plug this into our left-hand cluster connector, and you see we've got real nice flowing lines here so that nothing's all tangled up and, and a mess. We're going to put this one aside for right now. Uh, I've already prepped my right hand pod which has our fuel gauge and a voltmeter in it. In an original application we would have had a fuel gauge and a blank or a clock in here. Uh, the AEW cluster kit does come with the yellow power wire for your clock. Again, I've not installed that in the connector here because we're not going to use that. This particular application we're going to need a feed for both the gauge and the voltmeter. We're going to need a ground for the voltmeter lamp and we're also going to need a ground for the actual voltmeter itself from the mechanical end of it. I've got to connect the lamp wire with the stock lamp socket for our fuel gauge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our instructions out here and we're going to read what we have to do. We've got our 5960 Chevy typical right hand dash cluster connections. You'll see it's all in four color, very easy to read, showing you what you have to do. So I'm going to get one of these light sockets that we give you in the kit. And I'm going to grab one of these really cool crimp on rivets here. What you do there, they're all in a strip. We're just going to cut these off. We're going to need one. Now when you hook these light sockets up, you have to hook the light socket, or slide the light socket, I should say, down onto the wire first. Then we're going to put our rivet in here. And we're going to take our crimpers. I'm 
Store our wire in there. We've got a good mechanical crimp there. We have two crimpers that we recommend and two crimpers that we use here in the shop. And that's our 500-649 and our 500-523. These are available for purchase or they are available to be rented. So right now we've got our two lamp sockets all ready to go. We've got to make our connection for our fuel gauge and we've also got to make our connection to our voltmeter. Now I've already taken the liberty of making our one jumper over to the voltmeter here. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get our terminals out here. What I'm going to do here, since we're coming off the fuel gauge, I'm going to double these together in the terminal. Okay, and we'll look at our instruction sheet. We're going to take our connector here that we use this is our 12 volt feed. And you'll notice when you're looking at it, looking down on top of it, it's going to go here in this top cavity. We're going to plug that together. We're going to get ourselves another terminal out of our bag here. And we're going to print this onto our tan wire. You'll notice how well these tools work. They give you a real nice print. We're going to take our tan wire and we're going to plug that in to our empty cavity, and now we've got our fuel gauge connection all done. Again, this is our 12 volt feed wire over to our voltmeter. We also need a gauge ground for the voltmeter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of measure this out. I'm going to give it a little clip here. And we're going to discard all this wire here. Typically what you would do in this particular instance is you would use the ring terminals that are in here that have a nice insulating sleeve, but um, we have the capability of uh, these other terminals here, so we're going to actually use these. Okay. We're going to just crimp our ring terminals on here. ready here. So right, right now, we're all ready to hook this into our right-hand pod. We've got, got our light for our voltmeter. We've got our two connections for our voltmeter, positive and ground. We've got our ground, or our lamp, excuse me, for our fuel gauge. Got to get a bulb in there before I put this in. Lamps are not included in the kit, by the way. You'll need to use your old ones over again or get new ones. That's an 1895 on your instrument gauges. And then we've got our hookup for our fuel gauge here. I'm going to go ahead and plug this on. Just notice that this uh, ground wire for this lamp is dangerously close to the positive on this voltmeter. So what we're going to do so that we don't get a short is I just bent this up out of the way so if it does move up underneath there, it won't short on us. Okay, we're going to take our jumper wire here. This is our 12 volt feed for our voltmeter. We're going to put that down onto our positive stud. We're using a voltmeter, make sure you pay attention to which one's positive and which one's negative because if you don't, you will blow your, your gauge fuse. this up here out of the way. So we're going to put this up here. Let's take our standard nut driver here. Okay, that's our 12 volt. This is our ground here. We've got that on our ground stud. Your cluster connection is done. 
Now, I can't do anything with our lamp here just yet because i got to get a bulb in there. And there's a couple things you can do here. You know, you've got your wire lengths here. Um, you can uh, put a zip tie, something like that around them. I think what I'll do is I'll just get a little length of uh, tape here. And I'll just kind of neaten this up a little bit. connection for our right hand pod. Get our light bulb in there, snap that in, and this will be all done.